when it comes to adding your personality, when it comes to singing, it I would say maybe it's a little easier purely on the fact that everyone's voice is different. You can Absolutely. try to um, embellish it as much as you want with you know taking bits from different singers that you appreciate. Mm. But at the end of the day, if you sing in your, your natural voice, then it's always going to be different yeah, than absolutely. the original. I find yeah. that I used to, when I used to sing, I used to Americanize my speech quite a lot. Mm. And when I got to, I would say 19, I was, I really kind of thought, oh, I got a mad case of imposter syndrome now. Well, I'm, well, I'm from Belfast. Like, I've got this accent. Why am I hiding that? You know, it's just, it's part of me now. So I do try and bring that out a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, with me, um, some of my friends will know I'm a bit of a mimic. So uh, mm. I do have a tendency to, to impersonate the people I sing. And um, I started out doing Elvis impressions originally because he, there's just something about his voice that wise men say only fools rush in. And that, that really spoke to me when I was about 14. My voice broke when I was 14. I'm like, yeah, I could do <laughs> yeah. that. Um, Johnny Mercer is another singer. Um, he's got, again, quite a low pitched voice. And um, recently I've been finding that whenever I sing his songs, I sound, I sound a little bit like him. I can't sound exactly like him hmm. because I think if I do that, I am copying and I lose that bit of identity. Um, so, like I said earlier, you, you borrow from people. So whenever I do uh, impressions, um, I always try and put that little bit of myself in because people then don't get confused about who I might be. Stewie, I told you about talking to the nice man on the microphone. Go oh, away, Brian. Stop it, Brian. Be right. <laughs> oh, my God. That was brilliant. Oh, my God. Thank you. I do a little bit of impersonation myself. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, great. Nice to have another one in the room. <laughs> nice to know I'm not the only mad one here. <laughs> hey, Peter, I told you to take the trash out. It's still there! <laughs> Come on, can I just get one? Oh, all right, fine. Giggity, 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 go! This has now turned into a podcast about Family Guy. It happens now. <laughs> but in terms of like other celebrities, yeah, there, there are um, there are certain voices out there that you just there's you kind of need to try and impersonate because they're so unique. Like I, I love doing the Matthew McConaughey every now and then, man. It just gets it hits it hits a little bit of back of the throat that I, that I don't use very much. But when I do that, then. Everything's all right, man. It's all right, all right, all right. Let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, there's, um, I'm, I'm the same, but my, my, my impressions seem to be more sort of the golden age of Hollywood. So, um, yeah. well, and Brando, that kind of over-exaggerated kind of... How many times have I told you? <laughs> I spent many times trying not to be careless. Women and children can be careless, but not men. By the time I do that, I want the Doritos and just... That's a great, Brando. That's very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, it took a long time. <laughs> it took, it, <laughs> I went off there. <laughs> it, I'll tell you something. The first time I, have, I ever remember doing Brando in public, I was at secondary school, and I'd watched The Godfather. I turned 16. I watched it with my parents. Yeah. And I spent the entirety of the next day standing in front of the mirror, saying, I'm going to make him an awful, he can't refuse. Because there was a bully in the, I, 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 there was a bully in the playground. And right. by, and he, he knew I did voices. And every day he'd come up to me and say, what kind of voice are you going to do today then? And I used to throw him off and I did, um, Jimmy Stewart. Um, well, now, um, I, I, I know what you're saying. Uh, and, and the answer is, um, yes. Um, <laughs> um, uh, I used to do um, Johnny Carson. Uh, the former host of uh, the Late Show. Um, so, so Halloween, Halloween. Um, everyone goes to things like ghosts, goblins, ghouls. Uh, so this year, I'm going to go something really scary. My ex-wife. Um, uh, 
that's that was in that was in poor taste. Um, but um, yeah, I just I wanted to do Brando, and there's another. I mean, Christopher Walken as well. I can't do a Christopher Walken to save my life. Well, there's little things you can do to help it. <laughs> you need to teach me how to do that, and at another time, because that. <laughs> How am I funny? How am I funny? <laughs> what the fuck is so funny about me? Huh? <laughs> Do I amuse you? <laughs> am I some clown here to amuse you? Do I make you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> what a great scene. That's so good. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh I dear. think that's that is I think that is the best gangster movie. I really do. Oh my god, yeah, so many fantastic performances. Scorsese yeah. is a genius yeah. as a director. It's so really so is. good. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like other um Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> that's one thing. If I wasn't doing music, I'd try to get into voice acting as well. Yeah, it's same. something I love doing. Um Yeah. yeah. But to kind of bring it back, you did mention Johnny Mercer there. <laughs> and we got a, we do have a, a Johnny Mercer track here, yeah, Summer Wind. Tell yeah. me about this song. Uh, well, Summer Wind is um, is a song that's been covered by so many artists. The most famous version that I think it is is in existence is Sinatra's version, which he recorded uh, at Capitol Studios. Um, but I first actually heard Johnny Mercer as a singer. Um, on, in the film L.A. Confidential because um, he sings the opening track uh, Accentuate the Positive and he he was a lyricist he, wa- he was a singer but he was also a lyricist so he wrote all the lyrics and Summer Wind when I first heard this track I first became aware of Mercer's later stuff thanks to Martin Freeman and Eddie Piller um, and their compilation albums and Johnny Mercer's version of Old Black Magic was on there and I typed it into Spotify and I found this entire list of Mercer and I listened to Summer Wind. It's in D flat and um, the arrangement that is done on it is, it sounds so 70s, but it works really, really well with that vintage 1940s style of his singing. And um, outside of Not For Sale, which is on the same album, um, there, that's my go-to song and I love singing it, absolutely. Very good. Let's have a little nappy, as we like to say in Belfast. Here we go. <laughs> 